Okay, so get this. Uh, we found this really weird snippet online called, like, Day 25. Day 25. Yeah, it's totally triptych, right? Like, yeah. Day 25 of what exactly? Right. But it's basically a checklist. Uh, looks like some kind of plan all about SEO. Okay. Which, as anyone in healthcare knows, SEO, it's, like the key yeah. yeah it's like if people can't find you online you might as well not even exist exactly so we're diving deep into this day 25 thing today yeah. trying to mm -hmm. figure out you know not just what it says to do but like why i see yeah because especially for you know healthcare professionals like you're experts right right but that expertise needs to be like discoverable absolutely so let's um let's jump right in first thing on this day 25 list yeah keyword research and it even names these tools Semrush and Aravitz. Oh, yeah, those are... I've heard of them, but I got to be honest, they kind of sound like... Uh, they can be a little intimidating if you're not familiar with them. Intimidating, yeah. Yeah, but they're incredibly powerful once you sort of get the hang of it. So break it down for us, like in plain English. Sure. So basically, these tools let you see what people are actually searching for online. Okay. Like what words and phrases they're typing in when they need help with them something. Right. Exactly. So instead of guessing what people might be searching for, you're actually using data to figure out what they are. So it's not just about healthcare as a key word. It's <laughs> got to be. No, no, you got to get much more specific than that. Right. Think about it. If someone's, let's say, struggling with anxiety, okay, they're probably not just searching anxiety. No, they'd be searching for like... They might be searching for anxiety relief techniques or how to manage panic attacks or something like that. Anxiety therapist near me. Exactly. And that's where these tools come in. They help you identify those very specific phrases that people are using so you can tailor your website and your content to attract the right people. So basically like speaking their language. Precisely. I like it. Okay, what else is on this mysterious checklist? Day 25 also mentions optimizing. A oh. bunch of website stuff. Oh yeah, that's crucial. Stuff like meta descriptions and titles and... Uh, alt text. Yeah, alt text, what even IS, all that stuff. Okay, so think of it like this. Your website is like a storefront. Okay. The title is the big bold sign above the door that tells people what you're all about. Gotcha. The meta description is like the little blurb in the window that gives them a sneak peek of what's inside. Okay. And alt text. That's like for images. Search engines can't actually see images, right? All right. So alt text is like the description you add to an image that tells the search engine what the image is about. So it's like accessibility for robots. It's accessibility for robots and for people who might be using screen readers too. Ah, uh, I see. So it's really important for making your website accessible to everyone. Gotcha. And this all helps with like ranking higher in search results. Absolutely, again. because when search engines can understand what your website is about, they're more likely to show it to people who are searching for that information. Makes sense, makes sense. Okay, next up on the list, improving internal linking structure. Oh yeah, this is another important one. I have no clue what that means. All right, so basically internal linking is about connecting the different pages on your website. Oh. Okay. So for example, let's say you have a blog post about the benefits of yoga for mental health. Mm -hmm. And then you have another page on your website that lists local yoga studios. Right. You would want to link from that blog post to the yoga studio page. So people can like find a class. Exactly. But it's not just for the user's benefit. Oh. It also helps search engines understand how all the pages on your website are related to each other. And that they're all like high quality and relevant. Exactly. It shows that you're providing a comprehensive resource on the topic of, in this case, yoga for mental health. Gotcha. So we're like building pathways within yeah, our websites. Yeah. That's a great way to put it. All right. Now this one surprised me. Day come to five also says to optimize your LinkedIn profile. Ah, yes. LinkedIn is often overlooked, but it's a powerful tool for SEO. Really? Oh yeah. Think of it like this. LinkedIn is a search engine for professionals. Okay. And just like Google, it uses keywords to determine who shows up in search results. So someone searches therapist specializing in trauma. Right. If your profile is optimized with those keywords... You're more likely to pop up. Exactly. And that could lead to new clients, collaborations, all sorts of opportunities. Hmm. I never thought of LinkedIn like that. It's a gold mine if you use it strategically. Okay, I'm gonna have to work on that. Now the next one sounds kind of uh, tedious. What's that? It says, submit your website to healthcare directories. <sighs> yes, not the most glamorous task, I admit. It sounds kind of boring. It can be, but it's important. Think about it. When people are looking for healthcare providers, yeah. 
where do they often go? Online directories, yeah. Exactly. So if your website isn't listed in those directories, you're missing out on a huge opportunity to be found by potential clients. It's like being in the yellow pages back in the day. It's the modern day equivalent for sure. Okay, that makes sense. So it's about like strategic placement. Precisely. It's about making sure you're visible in the places where people are actually looking. Okay. Now, finally, we get to content. Day 25 suggests writing an SEO optimized blog post. No, oh, yeah. Content is king. But how does SEO even fit into like writing a blog post? Well, it's all about making sure your content is findable. Right. You could write the most brilliant, insightful blog post in the world, but if it's not optimized for SEO... No one's going to see it. Exactly. It'll just get lost in the vast sea of content online. So what do you do? Like, stuff keywords in there? Well, it's a little more nuanced than that. Yeah. It's about understanding what keywords your target audience is using and then naturally incorporating those keywords into your writing. So it still sounds good, but the robots can find it too. Yes. It's about striking that balance between writing for humans and optimizing for search engines. Gotcha. Okay, last item on the day 25 checklist, monitoring SEO performance. Oh yeah, this is important. It says to use uh, Google Analytics. Is that really necessary? It's crucial. Google Analytics is like your website's report card. It tells you how people are finding your website, what pages they're visiting, how long they're staying, all sorts of valuable information. So you can see what's working and what's not. Exactly. And then you can use that information to make adjustments. So SEO is like a constant process. It's not a one-time thing. It's an ongoing process of monitoring, tweaking, and improving. Always learning. So even though this whole day 25 thing is like a total mystery. Right. We still don't know what the other 24 days are about. I feel like we learned a lot. We did. About, you know, how important SEO is for healthcare. It's not just about being online. It's about being findable by the people who need you. Exactly. So if you're a healthcare professional listening to this, yeah. Um, yeah. maybe take a look at your own online presence. See if there's anything you can do to make it more, you know, visible. Yeah. And who knows? Maybe we'll even track down the full 25-day uh, plan. Maybe. That would yeah. be interesting. That'd be a deep dive for another day. Definitely. All right. Thanks for joining us on this one. Thank you. We'll see you next time. See ya.